In Canada, there are over 17,000 RCMP police officers. These officers are posted in some of the most challenging locations in the country. In Alberta, or K Division, there are over 2,800 officers posted from the border of the United States to the border of the Northwest Territories. No matter who they are or where they serve, they all have one thing in common. RCMP, bonjour. This is the Operational Communication Center, or OCC. There is a center in Edmonton, responsible for Edmonton North, and a center in Red Deer, responsible for everything south. There are a few detachments that have their own local dispatch, but for the vast majority, every call that any officer responds to will start in these two locations. On this shift, we catch up to Jen. She is in the middle of her 10-hour shift in the Southern Alberta Operational Communication Center. It has been a regular day with regular call volume. However, the policing environment is one of instability and can change in an instant. So I'm currently at the Southern Alberta Operational Communications Centre in Red Deer. And on an average day here, we're actually a pretty busy place. We handle 63 detachment areas. So to give you an idea of geographic area, that would be from Wetaskiwin all the way down to the US border and then BC to Saskatchewan border out of this one centre for the RCMP. So if somebody is calling for the RCMP 911 or non-emergency lines for any of our detachments, in that area, we take them here. So uh, my name is Jen and I work at the Southern Alberta OCC for the RCMP Telecommunications. I have been an operator for 10 years, over 10 years As now. Jen is being interviewed, a 911 call comes in that she has to take. He's my neighbor that lives two down, two houses down from my house and I'm pretty sure he has a warrant out for his arrest. Okay, what's your address for your house? This time around, the call was routine. But as Alberta RCMP officer Dalton Rouse explained, not all calls are a simple open and shut case. The OCC is just absolutely imperative to what we do on the road as uh, first responders, as general duty police officers, because when somebody phones the police, they're uh, in the time of crisis, and they may have never phoned the police before ever. Um, when they do phone in, the person who takes the call has to get some very key information very quickly. The person who's making the phone call, the complainant, is generally in some degree of panic and the operator or the call taker is going to have to calm that person down so they can get us logical information, they can get us uh, quality information that we can do background checks on, uh, we need to get accurate addresses, we need to know what's going on at the scene so we can deploy the proper resources and prepare our members so we can be safe but so we can also respond to the complaints in a um, uh, an appropriate fashion, you know, whether it's with our license sirens, whether it's no license sirens, there's a uh, hundred different scenarios. Just as it seems that things are looking like a regular shift, the OCC takes a call dealing with a drive-by shooting in Elk Point. 10 and do we have other members with you? Okay, and member that's the primary car, can I get your unit number, please? I'm going to stay off the air because it sounds like they're on foot. Members confirmed, did they hit the belt? And they're on foot? 10 and who's my primary, please? 10-4, and what's our speeds, and give me a rundown on what's going on. Guys, just make sure that vehicle's secure in case the firearm's in there. This is the type of call that OCC brings in a police officer for. The OCC has, on every shift, a uniformed police officer who can take control of emerging or exigent circumstances. Staff Sergeant Rod Kosilny has been an officer for 28 years, and tonight he finds himself being brought into the call. Yeah, so the K-Division member operational support section is from A to Z. We are there for the support of the districts, all the members of the detachments, and pretty much all the sections in the province. And again, we can get a call about as you just saw, a pursuit after a shooting in Elk Point where all hell breaks loose to something as simple as a member wanting to charge somebody and asking a question about documents or him, the member and I going through the criminal code together and talking about exactly what they're looking for to whether I call members out or not to coordinating cars. If I've got a major event, I will call cars. I'll look at my map and I will call cars to start infiltrating an area to help out. So. It's everything. We're the ones, we're the first stop. We're the ones that triage most everything coming in here and decide who are we going to call? Is it going to be an aircraft? Are we going to call 
somebody at a higher level at a district because a major event's going on. Thankfully, this situation was resolved quickly and without injury to the public and any members involved. Tonight, the OCC took over 600 calls for service. Working together with the public, the officers, and the OCC team, the night is considered a success. I love my job. I absolutely love it. Um, I really like knowing that I, every day I go to work, I'm going to help people. And um, what I do is really important. And it kind of has that very fulfilling aspect that you know you're making a difference. And it's really nice to have a job where you feel like you're making a difference because, you know, then you can kind of slough off the rest of your life. <laughs> As far as what we should expect, as far as how busy it goes, we uh, will find each operator will take approximately 300 to 400 calls a day in a 12-hour shift. And then out of those calls, it'll result in about 100 to 150 files each, which then gets dispatched out by our dispatchers uh, that are on the side here out to the officers themselves, and sometimes through radio, sometimes electronically, but uh, always out for their response as needed. They essentially are a lifeline for us because sometimes we're at scenes by ourselves. They do uh, checks on us on the radio at certain periods of time when we're on scene. If we don't answer the radio, then they'll be calling back up for us to come check on us if we're there by ourselves for whatever the reason is. Um, really important to maintain that good communication, that good relationship with them. And uh, um, it's just a vital, they're just a vital part of what we do here as frontline officers. One thing that we find that the public may not be aware of is that they may actually get transferred quite a few times before they get to the appropriate location that's going to handle their call. So for example, when you first call 911, they're going to ask you if it's police, fire or ambulance and trying to determine whether or not their resources need to be dispatched. And if it is police related, it's going to come to us. But you might have to tell your story a couple of times in different ways. We ask different questions and ambulance personnel will need to know very different information than what perhaps the police uh, operators that we have will. So we ask a lot of questions. It almost feels like why do we need to ask all these questions? Just come. Uh, but unfortunately by us doing a lot of pre-screening and understanding of what's happening on scene, it allows our officers to be able to make the best response. We can decide how many people go. Is there any special equipment that needs to attend with us? And all of those questions that we're asking that might seem like it's delaying the response, it isn't. It's all happening simultaneously. So we can actually be taking all the information that you're giving to the call taker and it's actually electronically being sent over to the dispatcher at the same time and they can be putting that information out to the officers absolutely with no delay. So we do our best to educate the public when they're even calling us. We might say to them, you know, it's okay, me asking questions is not going to delay us getting there. In fact, it's going to help us.